Hello and welcome back to another informational video on epilepsy. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our previous videos on the basics of epilepsy, seizure first state, what causes epilepsy, diagnosing epilepsy, staying seizure safe, and treating epilepsy. In this video, we talk about some rare forms of epilepsy called epileptic encephalopathies. What are epileptic encephalopathies? Epileptic encephalopathies are a group of disorders in which the persistent epileptic activity contributes to the progressive impairment of the brain. This group of disorders includes Dravet syndrome, Landau-Kleffner syndrome, Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, West syndrome, Odahara syndrome, and early myoclonic encephalopathy. Dravet syndrome is a lifelong form of epilepsy that begins within the first year of life. It occurs in 1 in 20,000 people to 1 in 40,000 people, and about 8% of children that experience a seizure under the age of 1 are likely to have Dravet syndrome. Since the condition is caused by the SCN1A gene mutations in most cases, diagnosis includes genetic testing along with clinical evaluation, EEG, and MRI. Proper diagnosis of Dervais syndrome is often delayed due to the MRI and EEG tests showing normal results during infancy. Individuals with Dervais syndrome tend to have prolonged seizures, so treatment involves a combination of anti-seizure medications to prevent seizures and rescue medications for seizure emergencies. Landau-Kleffner syndrome is also known as acquired epileptic aphasia. The onset is typically between 3 to 7 years of age and may begin suddenly or slowly over time. The disorder is characterized by seizures and progressive language difficulties, mainly losing the ability to speak and understand speech. Although the seizures are infrequent, they often occur during sleep. Simple partial seizures are most common, but tonic-clonic seizures are also possible. Landau-Kleffner syndrome is twice as prevalent in males than females. Some behavioral problems that may develop include ADHD, hyperactivity, anger outbursts, and withdrawn behavior. The causes for Landau-Kleffner syndrome are unknown, but is suspected to be caused by an autoimmune disorder or genetic mutations. The seizures are generally managed by anti-seizure medications or dietary therapy. Lennox-Gastaut syndrome is a progressive form of epilepsy that affects about 3-4% to of children with epilepsy and its symptoms include recurrent seizures, abnormal EEG, cognitive or behavioral challenges, and delayed development. It typically begins between ages 2 to 5 and occurs more frequently in males. In about 70 to 80 percent of the cases, the condition is caused by brain disease, injury, or abnormal development. Over 80 percent of those with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome continue to experience seizures in adulthood, but the seizures may be less severe and less frequent. There is currently no cure for Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, and it can be difficult to treat due to its resistance to anti-epileptic medications. A combination of multiple medications may be necessary, but studies with dietary therapy and cannabidol have also shown positive improvements. West syndrome is also known as epileptic or infantile spasms and is a form of epilepsy that begins between 3 to 8 months of age. The spasms begin suddenly and only last a few seconds, but generally occur in clusters of 10 to 20 minutes. EEGs of those with West syndrome tend to show a high peak erratic brainwave patterns. Other symptoms can include skill regression or difficulty developing skills that require muscle coordination and voluntary movements. The cause for the condition may or may not be identifiable, but is generally caused by structural abnormalities in the brain. About a third of those with West syndrome may develop recurrent seizures, which often develop into Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. Another third of the individuals continue to have spasms when they are older, while the rest, generally those with no clear cause, may have their spasms resolve over time. 
Otohara syndrome is also known as early infantile epileptic encephalopathy and is characterized by seizures that are hard to control and developmental delays. The disorder affects infants under the age of three months, usually within the first 10 days after birth. The type of seizures experienced are mainly tonic seizures, but focal and myoclonic seizures are also possible. Like West syndrome, the seizures only tend to last a few seconds, but can occur alone or in clusters. Odahara syndrome is a result of abnormal brain structure that is believed to have genetic causes in most cases, but can also be a result of damage or abnormal development. Surgery may be an option to correct structural issues in some cases, but most cases are treated with anti-seizure medications. Similar to Odahara syndrome, early myoclonic encephalopathy appears within three months of age, typically within the first two weeks after birth. It is also possible that the onset occurs during the last trimester of pregnancy. About 80% of the infants with the disorder have focal seizures in the form of small twitching areas, usually face or extremities, such as finger or eyelid. About 33% have seizures only while asleep. There may be some abnormal neurological behavior present prior to the onset of seizures. The brain is normal in size, but microcephaly may develop over time. Early myoclonic encephalopathy also stems from metabolic disorders that are of genetic origin. If you have any questions regarding epilepsy and seizures, please do reach out to us by email at educationcoordinator at esebc.ca and visit our website at www.esebc.ca. You are also welcome to reach out to us through our social media platforms and follow us to stay updated with our client support and education and awareness programs and events. Also be sure to fill out our feedback form in the description. Your feedback is very much appreciated and it helps us improve our future presentations. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video on more information about epilepsy.